All right, guys. Got another. Got another video. You join me for morning prayer. Thank you. Um, and I tell some little testimonies in there about giving and helping and what happened to me yesterday. And it makes you feel so good when you get to do something, just something small that will have a, such a profound effect on somebody. It really affects your spirit. And it, it creates a connection. And it's a good thing. And I love that. And the Lord knows I love those doing those little things because big things are great. It's why he never let me win the lottery because he knows I'd give all the money away because I just don't need that much. I'm very happy with what I have. But the little things are the ones that have the, the, the deepest and most intense effect. Um, but today, in this video, I want to read 2 Timothy 3. And this goes to a video Tim had done and a few of the other people had done too, I think. Diamond Justification, Diana M, Sealed by the Blood, and I think Lily Girl did, did, did this too. It's, it's, it relates to the things that we see going on. And a lot of people who profess Christ, but their behavior and their beliefs don't, don't jive with it. Um, especially as it pertains to near-death experiences. Now, some people, I watch their testimony, and it makes sense. Because they come back with a greater testimony for Jesus Christ and salvation through him. Most of them come back and don't even talk about Jesus anymore. They only talk about God. Are they talking about God or are they talking about Satan? He's going to end up down there, but who are they talking about? Because their testimony before they went was one thing. And then when they came back, they had a whole different testimony about their faith. And that's not good because that could end up being a bad situation. Uh, it depends on what happened because we know Satan, he's tricky and we know he can mess with you. So we want to make sure we stay on guard for that. But the people that he is tricked or people that are working for him, whether they know it or not, have a very specific type of description that fits them. And these are red flags that we can use to identify who these people are. That's why I'm, I'm always testing the spirits. And I preach that to you guys. Test the spirits. Test everything. Somebody comes to you and what they say sounds good. Now you got to start listening. Even me. Do it to me. Listening to those little details of what they say to see if it matches. Because I've run into people I thought were awesome. And then I started really listening to what they were saying. And it's like, oh, okay, now I see what's going on. And it's custom tailoring their words in order to make themselves sound more righteous or more believable. Um, Rapture of Twilight was a great one. And I have a sub to her at the beginning of the year, a sub to her up through into March. Finally, I had to unsub it because I just I started to see those problems of what she was really doing. And it was all about money. So, um and I've done that to a lot of people. Uh, there's people that have sent me messages. Hey, check out my channel. I go check out their channel. No. And they would they would put it in my comment section. And I would message them and go, look, if you want me to promote your channel, don't do it in my comment section. Send me an email. It's in my, all my video descriptions. Or contact me offline and give me the link so I can check out your channel. Because I just don't let anybody broad, broadcast anywhere, you know, because you don't know what they got. And most of them. They're off, way off, but they're trying to push their agenda. Um, first Tim or Second Timothy three: Perilous times and perilous men. But know this: that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. And this is all your list of indicators you can look for. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having, this is a key one, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. And now these are all great indicators to look for in a person who's doing videos or commenting or, or whatever's going on, whoever you run into. To listen to what they're saying and listen to how they're putting the words together. Because in many cases, some of them, it, they don't even realize that that's what they're doing. So that's what we have to watch for. We have to use discernment on these things. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. So they will use your sins... They will use your weaknesses against you. 
always learning. Here's another key part. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. We got people out there, and I've said this before, knowing the Bible doesn't mean you understand what you're reading. Anybody can memorize scripture, but you not being able to understand what that scripture is talking about is a different thing. And that's what this is. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because I can know five scriptures and be better righteously than somebody who's memorized the entire Bible because I believe what they'll say and I understand the truth of what they say. For example, grace through faith. There are people out there that read the exact same Bible. And actually, I'm being taught right now. The exact same Bible. And they don't understand that it's grace through faith. They are firmly stuck in you must do. Why? Because Jesus didn't do enough. He said it is finished. He did it all. Period. Done. Nothing else needs to be done. Why would you add to that? But that's what they think they have to do. And there's so many reasons why they do it. Now, as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, and theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I'm going to say this again. Verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Not may, not possibly will. And that's why I've said a couple of times, if I'm living, if I'm in Christ, but I'm living a really good life with no problems, I need to start questioning my walk with the Lord. Because the Bible says you will have this right here, this one sentence. You will suffer persecution. You will go through problems. There are going to be things. Because not only will people around you persecute you and mock you, but Satan is going to attack you because he doesn't like where you're at. He wants to break you down. So he'll, you'll get pain. You'll get sickness. You'll have things fall apart in your life. <laughs> you may even lose everything. Because he wants you to curse God. He wants you to deny God. He did the same thing to Job. Job lost everything he had because Satan wanted him to deny God. And what happened? Job held on to his faith. He got weak. He got low. But he held on to it. And he trusted and believed God. And what did God do? God gave him back twice what he normally, what he had in the first time. So if you're having, if you're <clears throat> on the other side of the aisle and you've got a great life, you need to look at this scripture and understand there's a problem. And you need to start analyzing yourself. And this is, I say this all the time, analyze yourself, look inward. It's important for us to look inward rather than judge other people because if we look inward and find things wrong, we can fix those things. Take the moat out of our eye before we tell our brother he has a speck in his. And then when we're walking right, when we're on the right path, then we can help others get on the right path. So verse 12, very, very good verse. And verse 13, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Ah, my Bible app stopped again. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to delete this one and download a different one. Okay. Uh, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing that whom you have learned from whom you have learned them, and that the childhood you have known, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ. I'm going to read verse 15 again, because again, here's another confirmation of grace through faith. And that from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ. Grace through faith. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, 
for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. And will we be perfect? Nope, can't be perfect. And honestly, I'm glad I can't be perfect in this body. Because if I can't be perfect, that means Christ is coming to help me. That means Christ is coming to save me. If I could be perfect, there's no need for Christ to come save me. And that's an important aspect to remember because he came for the sinner. He is coming for the redeemed. Well, if you can redeem yourself, then he can't. He has no reason to redeem you. So is he coming for you? Is he coming for all of us who are broken? I'm broken man. I'm walking with the Lord. I'm doing the best that I can in this flesh body with all this sin around me. And I know and understand I cannot be perfect. But that's okay. Because I know that through my imperfection, Christ will be made perfect. Because his glory and his... What's the other word I'm looking for? His glory and his righteousness will show forth and show brightly in me. And that's what my goal is. And then on the day of redemption, all this sin is gone. It's all taken away. This body is changed into a sinless, uncorruptible body. That's going to be a great day. We won't have to wrestle with this stuff anymore. We won't have to fight with this stuff anymore. But all we got to do is get to the end. But 2 Timothy 3 gives you a great list of things to watch for with people. If somebody is out there and they're sharing videos and it seems like something's not quite right, listen to what they're saying. Are they promoting themselves? Are they lifting themselves up? Are they saying... Yeah, I did all these things and I follow the Lord. My life is great and everything. Now you need to pull back and start questioning. Because as a Christian, you should be enduring things. To be at uh, friends with the world is at enmity with God. So if your life is good, there's a problem. There, to me, there's a really big problem there. Now, there's different descriptions of having a good life. I have a great life, but I have a lot of problems. And I deal with a lot, a lot of issues. But I have a great life. But that's from my perspective. Somebody looking in, oh, he's poor, he lives in a single white trailer, drives a beat up vehicle, you know, yada, yada, just on and on and on. But who do they come to when they need help? Who do they come to when problems arise and they don't know what to deal with? The first person that pops into their head is to call this guy. So when you look at that and you look, you know, which way the scale is going. I may get looked down on for my living situation, but they don't realize that I have learned so much over my lifestyle. I have a skill set that is very unique in this day and age and is very valuable to people out there. Uh, I can't even tell you the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars I've saved people on mechanics bills because I was brought up being a, a mechanic and I'm really, really good at it. And, um, and problem solving, real time problem solving, I, especially when I was still in the army. Um, in my short-term memory, I still had it. Um, I could solve a problem while other people were still thinking about it, and trying to figure out what they were going to do. And a lot of NCOs came to me because I was so good at that stuff. Oh, we can do this, this. I'd remember where everything was everywhere. Um, didn't have to have it on a piece of paper. I had it all memorized. Of course, my memory's junk now, but um, it, it's interesting to see that. because You'll, you'll hear them talk one way about you, but then you're the one they come to when they have an issue. And it, it's funny to me. But that's God working in you. That's God building you up. Um, it's, and it's all in the Bible. It is Every bit of it is in the Bible. Every answer to every question is in the Bible. Stay with the scriptures. Study the scriptures. Go into Google Bible verses about whatever you're looking for. This is the subject. And then scroll through and look at the different websites. And you'll find commentaries. You'll find lists of scripture. Uh, openbible.info is a good one to um, save on your desktop or on your phone. I can I, I do a, a add to link a link to my phone page uh, on my Android, and that way I can just tap it and it opens it right up on that website. Then I can type in the search bar what I'm looking for, and it gives me scripture for that. <coughs> Bible study tools the same way. It's really really good stuff and great resources to use. Because it's a lot of quick reference to get to the scriptures. Helps you answer questions a little easier. Especially when you have memory problems like I do. Anyway, I love you guys. Uh, I think I got one or two more videos to do and then I got to leave. So I'm going to try to knock them out and set them to load. So you guys got some stuff to chew on. Bless you all in Jesus name. 
and I'll see you in the next video.